Last year I made an episode of this show where I discussed the canonical endings of all the Resident Evil games that had multiple endings. Naturally, a lot of people wanted to see the same thing done with RE's biggest rival series, Silent Hill. Of course, no one actually asked for such a video, but they probably wanted it. So let's go back to the beginning and see if we can untangle this yarn ball of a cannon. No, not that begin- well, it is one of the only entries with a confirmed canonical ending, so I guess we may as well start there. Welcome to Cannonball. Up front, it's important to understand that I won't be discussing the joke endings here, the series staple UFO endings, the Silent Hill 2 dog ending, and the downpour surprise ending. Those are obviously non-canon, and I don't want to have to state that each and every time. Silent Hill Origins is a prequel to the first game with direct ties to its cast and narrative, so it's having a firmly canonical ending was pretty much guaranteed. There are two endings to this game. The good ending sees protagonist Travis Grady leave town as a lesser leaves baby Cheryl by the side of the road to be found by Harry and Jodie Mason to set the stage for the first game. In the New Game Plus exclusive bad ending, Travis turns out to have been the butcher all along or something. The good ending is obviously canonical, and while the bad ending could theoretically follow on from that, Travis cameos at the start of Homecoming about 20 years later, seemingly none the worse for wear, meaning he's not the butcher. Good ending is canon, bad ending is not. Silent Hill 1 is next and has four endings, good, good plus, bad, and bad plus. The criteria for these is as follows. Saving Dr. Kaufman in a side quest allows him to intervene in the climax and lead to the good ending. The plus version of either ending occurs if Harry is able to obtain and use a Glavtis on Sybil to save her from her parasitic possession. The good ending sees a lesser reincarnate one last time, giving the baby to Harry who escapes as nowhere collapses. In good plus, Sybil escapes with him. In bad plus, a lesser vanishes forever and Harry is left emotionally broken, Sybil trying to snap him out of it as nowhere collapses. In the bad ending, Harry's revealed to have dreamed the whole thing up as he died in the car crash at the start of the game. Silent Hill 3 is a direct continuation of the first game following the reincarnated Alessa, Heather, 17 years later. Obviously, this means one of the good endings is canon since the baby doesn't exist in the other two. So the question that must now be asked is, did Sybil survive the events of Silent Hill 1? The game itself changes the intro upon achieving good plus, having Sybil replace Harry's wife Jodie as if to suggest she escaped with him. No other ending changes the intro, but she's not mentioned in 3 at all. The only reference to her in a later game is in Homecoming, where Deputy Wheeler talks about how he heard of a police officer from Brahms who disappeared after going into the town, her bike being all that was found of her. This led many fans to conclude that Sybil died in the town, but it's entirely possible that Sybil survived and silently moved away to get away from the remnants of the cult. After all, the cult continues hunting Harry and Heather for the next 17 years, so she may well have gone into hiding and lived. Some fans point to Harry giving Heather an Aglauftis pendant before 3 as evidence either way. He either still has some because he didn't use it on Sybil and only knew it would work because Kaufman used it on the incubator, or he did use it on Sybil and that's how he knew it would work for Heather and just found more later. The Silent Hill play novel, a weird retelling of the game with a ton of outcomes for both Sybil and Harry, has no further insight sadly. It just reinforces that Sybil is doomed to die horribly in most versions of the story. The supplemental Book of Lost Memories refers to the good ending as the orthodox ending which is connected to the third game. The description of Good Plus focuses on how it changes the intro rather than its contents or implications, so it's possible that the book means the good outcome in general and not non-plus specifically. The 2006 novelization of the game uses Good Plus for its ending. Some fans point to this as Konami approving of that ending as canon, but Konami also approved the movies and the original run of comics, which are non-canon and also bad, and they also killed the franchise, so fuck them. Numerous developers from Hiroyuki Owaku to Masahiro Ito to Keichiro Toyama have contradicted each other and even themselves with regards to Sybil's canonical fate. Owaku is reported to have said her fate was left to players' imaginations at one point, which I think is the ultimate intent here. They basically decided to only canonise as much as was needed for the story they wanted to tell in 3 and left the rest up to the player. In essence, if you want Sybil to survive and escape town with Harry, she did. If you instead prefer Harry to be tragically forced to kill her in self-defence, then he did. They opted for a degree of player choice when it came to the canon, which was unfortunately taken in the wrong direction in the later Western developed titles. It wasn't that everything was open to interpretation or player choice, it was that if it wasn't directly relevant to a later instalment, it did not matter and the player was left to decide the more fitting or appealing outcome for themselves, as was the case with Silent Hill 2. This game has four endings, based largely on numerous smaller flags that determine the outcome. The Leave ending sees James leave town with Laura, presumably adopting her as his late wife had wanted. In Water sees James succumb to his grief over what he did and drown himself in the lake. 
Maria sees him leave town with Maria, who begins coughing like Murray had, suggesting that history may repeat itself. In Rebirth, James takes Murray's body to the Church of the Rebirth to perform an arcane ritual. All we know for sure of James' fate is that, according to the fourth game, Frank Sunderland's son, James, disappeared in Silent Hill, suggesting he never left. But he could have simply left town with Laura to start a new life and not told his dad. We don't know what their relationship was like after all. I mean, his dad keeps the umbilical cord of a kid who wasn't even related to him, so wouldn't you want a piece out of that relationship? In Water has perhaps the most evidence backing it. The novelization uses it. The Book of Lost Memories claims that James came to the town specifically to kill himself there. Masahiro Ito and Gai Sihi both choose that as their canonical ending, but Ito feels everyone has their own and Sihi prefers leave. The game's intro and manual both depict James carrying Murray's body away, which only happens on screen in In Water, but he also took her body in Rebirth, so who knows. Interestingly, Elle from Homecoming was apparently planned to be Laura, who would be in possession of James's jacket all these years later, which would imply they intended to make leave canon. Ultimately, I think it's likely that James didn't leave town, but the only ending I'm comfortable giving a firm stance on is Ritual being non-canon, since it requires a second playthrough to obtain the items required to achieve it. In terms of storytelling, I think James killing himself doesn't really fit the direction the narrative takes towards the end, seeing how he makes this bold declaration of not needing someone to punish him for his sins anymore right before the final boss. The narrative is more satisfying if he initially intended to kill himself, changed his outlook through his trials, and came out better for it, than if he changed for the better and then relapsed so strongly that he killed himself. Silent Hill 3 also has an ending locked behind a second playthrough, the Possessed ending, which has Heather murder Douglas, seemingly overtaken by the will of the cult's god. In the normal ending, the two leave town together, which is supported by a note found in Homecoming about Douglas exposing the cult, which could only happen if he lived. That's two firmly canonical endings so far. Technically, there's a third ending if you don't use the Aglautis in time, which results in the cult's god being birthed, but from the fact that this detail was never brought up in later games, I think we can write this one off. The Team Silent era was closed off with Silent Hill 4, The Room, which has, fittingly enough, four endings which are influenced by or take place in the titular room. The criteria here is whether or not Eileen dies in the final battle, and how well Henry maintained his apartment. If Henry saves Eileen in the climax, either escape or mother will be achieved. Escape sees Eileen discuss finding a new place to live, possibly with Henry. Mother has them return to the apartment, which Henry did a poor job of exercising. Eileen's death is exactly what it says on the tin, with Henry mourning her passing. And 21 sacraments results in Walter killing both Henry and Eileen, and the ritual succeeding. Given that the ritual is intended to bring about the rebirth of the cult's god, and later games don't support such a major event having happened, we can probably write that last one off. Other than the ritual being stopped though, there really isn't anything to suggest what became of Eileen or the apartment. In the Anne Story comic, Anne Cunningham and her father are shown inside an apartment that resembles room 302, which could indicate that Henry and Eileen moved out beforehand, which would also explain why room 302 appears in Silent Hill while Murphy and Anne are there. It's probably just an easter egg, but I'm willing to slap this with a plausible. But even then, this doesn't really affect much since Henry would probably move if Eileen died as well. Homecoming, the game that wanted so bad to set the canon for the previous games, is one where it's easy to sift through the endings. It's one of those where the character's actions have no logical connection to the outcome. Sparing Alex's mother agony or not, forgiving his father or not, and in some cases, healing Deputy Wheeler or not, lead to four possible outcomes plus an alien abduction. Smile is the basic good ending where Alex and Elle reunite and leave Silent Hill together. In Water reveals everything to have been a dream it seems, as Alex is drowned by his father to complete the Shepherd's Glen ritual. In Judgment, Alex finds himself captured and transformed into a pyramid head somehow, and Intensive Care makes everything out to have been a delusion, as Alex is still in the mental hospital. Given the aforementioned lack of connection between Alex's actions and the outcome, plus the lack of explanation that leads Alex from the final boss encounter to these other locations, and that two of them are bullshit dream endings, I have no issue with wiping all of them but Smile from the list of possible outcomes. I mean, Christ, even the UFO ending connects somewhat to the final boss scene, so the others have no excuse. Shattered Memories is non-canon, so the only thing worth getting into is that it is not connected to the bad ending of the first game. Sure, the devs may have used that ending as the inspiration for this game's narrative, but if Shattered Memories is Silent Hill Harry's dying dream, then why does he dream that Dahlia, a woman he's never met, was his wife instead of Jodie? The theory that Silent Hill 1 is a delusion of Shattered Memories Cheryl holds more water, and that theory proposes that the entire series didn't happen, which shows you how how much credibility that one has. Also, I don't accept Book of Memories hints that the books created an alternate reality where this game takes place. Fuck you.
Downpour is the last main instalment of the series and has five possible outcomes for Murphy Pendleton. These are determined by the player's karma score, their decision regarding Anne's fate, and whether or not Anne kills Murphy in the final fight. In Forgiveness, Anne learns that Murphy didn't kill her father and lets him leave to start a new life. Truth and Justice is the same, but Anne doesn't report Murphy is dead and instead goes to avenge her father by killing Officer Sewell. Full Circle is the result of Murphy not learning the lesson he was supposed to and becoming trapped in a perpetual loop in the town. Executions suggest this was all a delusion and that Murphy is a mass murderer being put to death. More of this shit and it doesn't even fit with the narrative up to now, making it blatantly non-canon. Reversal places Anne in Murphy's place and Murphy and Sewell's from the start of the game, possibly as punishment for her wrongful killing of Murphy. Tom Waltz, co-writer of the game and writer for a number of IDW Silent Hill comics, wrote the four-issue miniseries Anne's Story, which depicts the game from Anne's perspective, with the truth and justice ending being used. With no other evidence one way or the other, this makes that ending canonical despite the total openness the team seems to have been going for. There really is no point getting into Book of Memories since it's so far removed from the canon despite what its DLC notes want you to believe. The endings are weird and don't really relate to the character's actions in any meaningful way. Personally, I like to think the neutral ending where your character is just insane and the book isn't real is canon so that those awful retcons aren't. Silent Hill the Arcade has three endings but as an arcade rail shooter spin-off, no developers or games ever brought it up again so there's nothing to base speculation around. And that's the end of Silent Hill. The recent Dead by Daylight collaborations suggest that Konami are at least still willing to license the series out to other developers and if a team with as much love for the series as Behaviour Interactive were to make a pitch, maybe it could go somewhere. I just hope they don't remake the first game as a PlayStation exclusive dad simulator. At the very least, I want Bluepoint to make a proper HD release of 2 and 3. That would be rad. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they too can get lost in Silent Hill. Today's recommended videos are Pyramid Head Cuphead Meets Silent Hill and its sequel, Pyramid Head 2 Splattered Memories Cuphead Meets Silent Hill 2, both by James Farr, aka James Sunderland under a new name. They're SH2 and 3 reimagined in the style of Cuphead and they're outstanding in their ambition and detail. A must see for any SH fan.